Okay guys, so um, I figured I'd put together a quick video to walk you through the process of navigating the main activity that we're working on this week, which is the Skeletal Muscle Physiology Lab. Uh, you can see it right up on my screen here, and I'm going to walk you through the process of first accessing the activity in the first place, and then actually carrying out each activity. This is a pretty meaty one, uh, no pun intended because we're working with muscles. Um, you are going to be doing six different activities to explore six different aspects of muscle contraction. Uh, the first one, you're going to basically just learn what a muscle twitch is all about. You're going to define some terms. Uh, on this lab, on all six parts, it's really important that you read the introduction. A lot of the answers that you need, you're actually going to be able to get directly from the introduction. And in activity two, you're going to figure out how increasing and decreasing the voltage affects the strength of muscle contraction and how much force a muscle can generate. Um, in activity three, you're going to look at the effect of stimulus frequency, that is how often a muscle is stimulated in terms of what you can, what kind of force you can generate from a muscle. You're actually going to start to um, learn about a phenomenon called tetanus. Tetanus is just a sustained contraction in a muscle, which can in certain instances be good because it can allow you to sort of generate maximum tension and maximum force from a muscle. And then you're going to learn the factors that that are involved in muscle fatigue. Uh, you know that you can't make a muscle fire indefinitely. Uh, the resources that you need to make those muscles go run out and certain byproducts build up that can that can lead to muscle fatigue. And then finally, you're going to learn about the the link between the length of a muscle and its tension. And you're going to learn a little bit about why the muscles are attached in precisely the places that they are in order to generate the maximum amount of force. Um, so that's just kind of a brief summary of what you'll be looking at here. But uh, I'm going to scroll back up here and focus on activity one. I'm going to kind of walk you through this real quick. So I've already gone ahead and logged on to the online textbook. You have the username and password information on your document. Um, just in case um, anybody else on YouTube finds this, I'm going to leave that part out. But um, once you get here, this should be the first screen that you see and you're going to explore the study area. Um, you can watch the e-text if you want, but you're just going to be able to read the textbook. So this is the same screen we were on last week, so hopefully if you've been keeping up, you should be familiar with it. And just like last week, we're going to go to this left-hand menu over here, and we're going to choose Physio X. This is the suite of virtual labs that we have at our disposal, and the one you're going to be doing this week is Exercise 2 on Skeletal Muscle Physiology. Um, and you can see here, we are leaving off the very last activity, activity seven, but I do want you to do the first six. Um, so like I said, this might take you some time. There's really this and one other short activity to do this week. So um, take the time to really do a good job on this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on activity one, and it should open up in a separate window. So um, as always, you have options as to what you can do here. Um, I would definitely spend some time reading both pages of the introduction. In this case, as you're reading the introduction, look back at the questions because odds are you're going to be able to answer some of those questions using the information in the introduction. So it's going to be really important here to read the introduction so you can get what you need. Um, so I'm going to... I would also like you to do the pre-lab quiz after you read the introduction, just to make sure you have kind of some of the terminology down. But in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and skip right to the experiment. And again, these, these experiments are pretty easy to navigate because it's going to tell you exactly what to do. Um, in a perfect world, it would all show up on the same screen. But, um, and actually, let me see if I can do that. Um, that might actually work. So um, let me, yeah. So um, we'll go ahead and actually, sorry about that. So now we can see pretty much everything we need to see. And so the voltage on the stimulator right now is set to zero volts. 
Um, if it's set to zero volts, that means essentially there's no stimulation happening. And so we're going to click stimulate. And as you might predict, there's no actual force generated by that muscle because it hasn't received a stimulus that is strong enough. Um, one thing, one concept that you're going to encounter here is the concept of a threshold stimulus. Uh, you may remember when we talked about action potentials when studying the nervous system that the threshold stimulus was the minimum amount of voltage that needed to be applied to that neuron, or in this case, a muscle cell, in order for uh, an impulse to be sent. So um, the same rule applies here. If we don't, if the stimulus is zero, then nothing will happen. So we're going to navigate this just by clicking next. Um, and it tells us exactly what we just talked about. And then you're going to scroll down here and click on record data. Um, and the key, the key thing you're going to be looking at here is the latent period. That is the period between when an action potential is sent and when the muscle actually generates force. Because there's a lot of chemical reactions that need to happen to make sure the, the proteins, actin and myosin, in a muscle fiber actually bind, bind together and generate force. So um, if we go to the next one, we're going to go ahead and increase the voltage to 3 volts. And this goes in increments of 1 volt, so that doesn't take any time at all. And then it's going to tell us to stimulate again. This time, we actually generate some force. We can see that we generate a force of about one gram in this case. Um, and then when we click on next, we note the muscle force that developed, which is about one there, and we're going to record that data. And again, we don't need to write anything down because it's going to record everything for us. And it's actually going to graph this stuff really nicely. So now we're going to clear the tracings so we can uh, have a fresh palette to look at. Um, canvas palette? I don't think that's right. Anyway, um, so now if we go to next, we're going to increase the voltage to four and we're going to go ahead and stimulate again. And this time it's telling us to note that the trace starts at the left side of the screen and stays flat for a short period of time. You'll notice just to the left of the display, there's a tiny little interval where it remains flat. So really look for that closely. You see that it doesn't start right on the edge there. There's a little interval here. Our goal here is to figure out how long that interval is. So um, the force is a little higher. It's about uh, 1.32, as we can see here, as compared to 1.04 before. Um, and now the period of time that elapses between the generation of an action potential and the start of muscle tension development is called the latent period. Um, that's something you would have gotten from the introduction and something you would have defined in the first question. Um, so now this is where we get our data. So we're going to measure this. And what we'll do is we're going to click the plus button here. And when we do, we'll notice the yellow line starts to show up. You can start sort of start to see it emerge right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep hitting plus. You can see that I got up to 1.60 milliseconds here. Not a lot of time. And then we're going to keep going. And we're going to watch for when this force first goes above zero, when we first start to generate force. That would represent the time after the latent period. So the last time for which we have zero force is the latent period that we're looking for. So 2.4, there's still nothing. 2.8, there's still nothing. 3.2, you notice that we have a, a little bit of force. Not much, but enough. Um, so we're going to backtrack a little bit to the last time it's zero. And now the yellow line is positioned correctly, and we record our data. So um, now. We're going to clear those tracings, and we need to predict whether or not the changes to the stimulus voltage will alter the duration of the latent period. There's no right or wrong here. Uh, you're going to find out, and I'm going to say that yes, changing the voltage will change the latent period. Um, the bigger the voltage, the longer the latent period. Um, 
you may disagree, but we'll find out one way or the other right now. So we're going to go ahead and increase the voltage by 2 volts. So we're going to go from 4 to 6. We're going to stimulate. We're going to observe the tracings. Um, we're going to measure the latent period just like we did before. And then we're going to record that. Um, so we'll stimulate at 6 volts. We notice that it, it gets up toward 2 there, 1.65. We're going to measure and find the place where it first gives us any force at all. It looks about the same, but it's hard to tell. 2.4, then 2.8, then 3.2. Again, 3.2 is the first time we see any force. So the latent period, again, is 2.8 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and record that data. So, so far, um, turns out I was wrong. It turns out that the latent period is the same no matter what. So let's double check because uh, we need to do this until we get to 10 volts. So I'll go ahead and do this for 8. You'll see this curve show up in yellow. Again, a little higher. You see a slight increase in force to 1.81. We're going to measure that again. And we're going to see when it first shows any force at all, even a small amount, 2.8. 3.2, looks like our latent period is the same again. So um, I'll back up here to 2.8, and that's our latent period again. And finally, it tells us to get all the way up to 10 volts. So we're going to stimulate that. Doesn't seem like there's much increase. That might come into play later. The difference between 8 and 10 is only 0 0.01 grams. So um, that might come into play in later activities. But for now, we're just measuring the latent period. 2.4 is nothing, 2.8 is nothing. And again, we see force production first at 3.2. So we're going to backtrack and declare our latent period to be 2.8, just like all the others. And we're done with activity one. So the take home message here is that that latent period, the time it takes between an action potential and an actual nerve, uh, an, a muscle contraction, the, the amount of time it takes for all those chemical reactions to happen that make muscles contract is 2.80 milliseconds. And when you think about it, that's no time at all. Um, a, a thousand milliseconds equals one second. So 2.8 milliseconds in real time is nothing. But um, it's just a, an example that it does take time a very small amount of time for that action potential to actually have an effect. So that's what you were trying to get out of this one. So uh, that's activity one. The others are similar and you just follow the directions and record the data and it'll pretty much tell you what you need to know. And again, make sure you pay special attention to the introductions on this one. They'll be really helpful for you. Uh, if you have any, any issues at all, send me an email, uh, come to our Zoom meeting tomorrow at 11, uh, you know what to do. So, um, Hopefully that helps. Have a great day. Bye.